Alder Decker. You're muted, Dean. Here. All right, Alder Feldy. Here. Here. Alder Ackley. Here. Alder Donahue? Alder Donahue is not here. Unexcused. All right. Um, for those in the room, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, minutes from our last meeting from March 10th. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from our meeting? Motion to approve the minutes from last meeting. Second. There's been a motion and second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of approving the minutes, please state aye. 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 Anyone approve? Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. Okay. Elder Donahue is is now in the meeting. Um, general ordinance number 3.1 general ordinance number 42 2021 an ordinance repealing and recreating various sections of article 3 and chap of chapter 26 of the municipal code entitled electrical turn it over to chad thank you chair um so this is as stated uh, some electrical code changes that have been required by the state of wisconsin and i have uh, brought joe the uh, Joe Folger, the electrical inspector with me today. So if you have any other detailed questions that I'm unable able to answer, he'll be able to take those up. But basically we went through a recertification process uh, in 2019 with the Wisconsin Department of Safety and Professional Services to continue to do electrical inspections uh, in the city and do the permitting um, of those. And as part of those requirements, uh, part of those that approval, the state came back with a letter uh, in December that, of 2019 that stated that we needed to uh, change our code to not be more restrictive than state statute. So the five things that are outlined is uh, emergency work notification requirements contradicted the state, so those had to be addressed in the uh, electrical code. Clarification of permit expiration requirements, uh, the city may not require a permit or an inspection for any installation, repair, or maintenance of electrical wiring within an elect existing industrial facility or manufacturing uh, facility. Uh, no permit shall be required for electrical work not requiring a service inspection where cost of materials is less than $500. And then the last one that it modifies the code to allow licensed individuals to complete electrical work uh, because our code currently only allows licensed electrical contractors. So the five changes have been incorporated into the code to be, to be compliance with the state and to continue uh, permitting and licensing. This is a, a revenue generator for the city. Um, under our uh, revenues, it's about $100,000. That's part of the uh, building inspection budget. So it's very important to us to continue to do electrical inspections and, and approving this ordinance would keep us going. All right, any questions from committee members? Any motions? I make a motion, motion. to approve. Motion by Dean. Second. Second by Barb. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That's approved. Thanks, Chad. 3.2, RO number 168-2021, uh, by the city clerk submitting a communication from Visit Sheboygan regarding Request to the Common Council for the Sheboygan Concerts and Freedom Fest events. Chad? So this is a dual referral, and those of you that were at uh, Public Works last night heard the same uh, conversation, but this is to work with Visit Sheboygan to uh, help do the Freedom Fest, the 4th of July celebration, which will be held this year on July 3rd, um, and then to do concerts at Fountain Park. So as part of the... Uh, tourism fund budgeting, we budget overtime dollars for police, fire, and DPW services related to these events and um, to cover those costs as a tourism expense versus a general fund expense. And that, so each year these, as we move forward, Visit Sheboygan needs the assistance of the other city departments to pull this stuff off. 
Um, so this is the request to do so. Um, there was some questions last night about sponsorships and all of our sponsors are still on board for this year and we intend to, we're hoping that the majority of the population will be uh, vaccinated sometime in June and that this event can continue because we've heard a lot of, con a lot of people that wanna start getting back to some normalcy. Um, and so the, the plan is to still implement social distancing and the other COVID protocols, but to try to pull this uh, event off to just kind of kick off the summer and, and at least you know have the uh, fireworks and those types of things. So there's a number of things that needs to be in play and the reason we're um, moving forward with this now is just to get everything lined up if this is gonna be a go because of the coordination it takes to pull off these two events. Mary Lynn? Um, thanks for that uh, report, Chad. I had just, uh, first of all, I have a comment. Um, if anyone thinks that uh, social distancing is going to be a possibility on the 3rd of July, I, I suggest we all think again. Um, there's no social distancing now that I generally see, and uh, people are not at all uh, concerned about, well, I shouldn't say that. Let's just say that if our COVID levels are approximately what they are now, it certainly won't be a safe event, but we can cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, does all the money that supports this, um, Chad, come from room tax money? I guess I just didn't understand where, number one, what the budget is, and number two, uh, how much it costs. So no, it does not. So we have, the city has an event management application, uh, agreement with Visit Cheboygan to do these two events uh, on the city's behalf. The funding for these events comes from a sponsorship from Planco at $50,000. Um, the 4th of July fireworks are covered by Festival Foods and the parade is covered by Wisconsin Bank and Trust. So the event is covered 100% with sponsorship dollars. The only thing that room tax pays for is some marketing <coughs> expenses to promote the event. And police and um, public works. That comes out, those expenses come out of the tourism fund and we budget for it each year based on our 30% room tax. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? So since this is just a communication, the correct motion would be to file the RO. So moved. Second. 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 Motion by Mary Lynn, second by Dean. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone, aye. anyone opposed, chair votes aye. Thank you. All right, 3.3, .3, discussion on possible action regarding request of al alcohol beverage license number 3451 Toby Carson for an extension under the city's continuation ordinance. City attorney, do you want this one or? Yeah, I'll, I'll start. Uh, I assume Mr. Corson is is physically present uh, there in, in the council chambers. Um, so this is an applicant who will be making a presentation to you uh, requesting an extension. Uh, so he is in violation of the city's continuation of business ordinance, uh, which would normally uh, result in the license being pulled uh, and then becoming available to, for example, one of the applicants who didn't get the license two weeks ago. Um, in this particular case, um, uh, you, you are able under our ordinance to grant a one-time extension uh, of the continuation of business. Uh, and uh, you could do that based on his presentation. Uh, you consider all the same sort of factors that, that you consider. Uh, if you do not approve of the extension, then you would make a motion to deny the extension, revoke the license for failure to follow the ordinance, and the license just becomes available to anybody, including uh, what, what you'll hear, I expect, is that he has a, a buyer for this property um, and that wants to, uh, that wants to run a bar in the same place. Uh, and uh, if that person would then just be thrown into the pool uh, with everyone else. If you do grant it, then the proper motion would be to grant the extension and then the license would, would remain unavailable and the new owner potentially would then be able to uh, apply. And in fact, they've already made uh, application uh, for the license. 
although technically they can't re they couldn't really apply until um, until you prove this extension. Okay. Well, there is nobody present in the council chambers. Well, except for Julian, um, Kathy, and Scott, myself. So. So, Ryan. Yes, Alder Donahue. Um, so, Chuck, I, I had some foundational questions thinking the gentleman was in the audience. Um, I didn't uh, get much out of his letter. Um, can you tell us what place this is and how long the extension would go for and if there really is a real sale to somebody new? So the extension is for how long you would want to grant it, uh, uh, although no longer than the end of the license year. Um, so the, the, the maximum amount of time you would be able to give is until June 30th. Um, the, as far as is there a real sale, it is our understanding that there is, um, that, 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 uh, some, that there was, uh, um, that there is a new owner potentially looking and maybe even bought the underlying property, but obviously you can't sell a liquor license. Um, and that person has actually applied for the license. Although again, technically they really wasn't a valid application, uh, until you, until you would approve this because, uh, there's no, otherwise there's no license to apply for. Uh, but we do believe that the person does actually exist. Uh, as far as what their plans are, I don't know. This is the old, um, uh, Julie, remind me of the name of the, 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 the tavern on Michigan Avenue. Blondie's, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Permission to speak, this is Irma Valdez. Hi, Irma, what's your relationship on this topic? Um, I actually bought the Blondie's bar, so um, I will okay. be opening as soon as we get everything up to code. Uh, we did have uh, the building inspectors come in, so there's a couple of things that we need to work on, and you know, hopefully if uh, we can get the license transferred, then we can open that up as a bar. Okay. Um, any, any questions for Irma at all then while she's online? Well, I would have a couple. Okay. Sure. Over Alder Donahue, go, go for it. Uh, Ms. Valdez, this is Mary Lynn Donahue. So um, I, I guess I am interested in, you have an accepted offer? We, I've already bought it. Uh, it's been transferred, um, the, the deed and everything has been transferred. Okay, all right, so you are actually the new owner. Correct. Okay, um, and your, planning to open uh, without, I mean, it would be nice to have the license, but you can still sell beer. It's my understanding and such, and you would still go ahead and open? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we would. Okay, all right. So then my question goes back to Chuck. Chuck, if there is actually a sale uh, of this property, uh, where does that leave us exactly? So it's it's a little complicated. Um, I think if if we were to say technically, um, th there technically you could make the argument that there is no person available to make the request for the extension because it is the previous license holder who still has the license, and if they no longer have a premise because they've sold out from under themselves. Um, Technically, we, we potentially have a problem. However, we, we don't usually enforce these things that strictly. Um, it is sort of disappointing that Mr. Corson's not here to actually make the presentation, but I suppose you could argue that Ms. Valdez is doing so on his behalf because she's, in the end, the one who's going to receive the benefit of it. Um, I think there was another question perhaps that you asked that I haven't answered yet. Well, and, and let me just switch back to Ms. Valdez. Was there anything in the offer to purchase or the transfer documents that made um, that made the sale contingent on the license being extended? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I was not aware um, of that. Um, in the sale, it said transfer of alcohol license. That was indicated in the sale. It wasn't av until after the fact that uh, we realized that because it had been closed over six months that there was something that he was not um, 
you know, mm -hmm. uh, he was not doing something correctly or it expired or something like that. Okay. Well, I guess my thought on this, and Chuck, I'm just interested in, is that, you know, there was a, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know what, if, who, if any lawyers were involved in this and whether they have malpractice coverage, but um, it seems to me there was something of a reliance uh, by Ms. Valdez on getting the license, um, which might have some impact on how I'm thinking about this. I mean, so she bought what she assumed to be a going business that would sell hard liquor. That right? is correct. That is correct. That was my impression. You're muted, Chuck. Uh, I, I think it's fair to say that that, that is that is the case. Obviously, liquor licenses can't be transferred as part of a a sale. So, um, you know, even that part of the uh, sale documents would have been even if the license was valid, you still have to approve um, uh, any, any transfer of the license. Uh, and and I think there is a common misconception uh, that you can sell a. In fact, we I see real estate listings for uh, taverns all the time that say uh, license included with sale. Well, obviously that's just legally not true, um, mm -hmm. but people sort of believe that. Uh, I, I will say that you have, to, as a committee, uh, while you're not required to, you have typically always just simply allowed in situations where there is being a transfer, you've allowed that to occur as long as there are uh, legally able to get the license and have not considered the other factors related to um, number of uh, licenses. Um, this one's a little more complicated by the fact that it, the license was no longer valid, but, um, but, but it is certainly, you have every ability to, to, to grant it now, to grant the extension of Mr. Corson now so that he can then sign over the, uh, the doc, sign the documentation to transfer the license over to her and then approve the license, which is actually on the agenda if you approve it uh, today. All right. So the, the, what I'm hearing at least, and I don't know how fellow committee members feel, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking the equities here, um, I mean, getting a new business off the ground is, is dicey under the best of circumstances. So um, I, I would like Mrs. Ms. Valdez's business to succeed. So it seems to me the proper motion then chuck would be to grant the extension until until june 30th with the thought at that point that that the extension would be maybe contingent on mr corson trans well you said he can't transfer the license well he, so he's filled out the paperwork to do it but it can't actually happen until you approve it so if if you, were, it. To, okay. if you were to approve okay. today the extension to the end of june basically what would happen is then a little later in the meeting you'll approve that transfer and then that uh extension grant that you've given to uh mr corson would transfer to ms valdez and she just need to open before june 30th okay I don't see any reason to wait until June 30th. Um, I mean, if the sale has already been has already been made. Well, you, you need to make the extension to a given date because she inherits that. Right. If you would make it till right. tomorrow and she doesn't open tomorrow, um, then she's got a problem. Okay. She still inherits okay. the continuation problem. Okay. I see Dean has a question, so I'll shut up for a while. <laughs> Uh, my question would be to Ms. Valdez. Um, what, what, when do you anticipate opening? When do you, when do, does it, does it sound like you will be opening? Uh, we were thinking August, um, because like I said, mentioned before, there's some things that are not up to code, um, that we need to, um, get fixed and updated before we can open. Does that have any limitations? So, that's what it so, you have the ability to grant the extension to June 30th. If she doesn't open by June 30th, she won't be able to get the license for July 1st. And then it would become available and everybody would, everybody, including her, would have the opportunity to apply for it um, at a later date. Okay. Alder Feldy? Do we typically just um, do one extension for, for bar owners? Um, 
you know, we're giving her till June 30th. Could she come back at that time and say, I just need two more weeks? I mean, uh, are, is that allowed or is that it? Just this is it, June 30th? Yeah, no there's more. two issues uh, here. One is that the ordinance is written in such a way to grant a single extension uh, to a date certain, uh, or you can pick a number of days. Um, the other issue that you have here is that the end of the license year comes on June 30th. You can't extend a license past its expiration date. So, so, so the June 30th date really is um, sort of a, a drop dead date. Um, as long as she's able to open one day legally uh, by June 30th, uh, then she would be no longer in violation as long as she doesn't shut down again for six months. Okay, thank you, Chuck. Well, I guess this is another question for Chuck. Um, so if she opens, like you said, for one day in June, I, um, then what would her requirements be if she's still in the middle midst of remodeling, but she was able to at least uh, get, get her tavern open to a point where she could have it open for a couple of days in June, a couple of days in July, and then finish up her remodel and open it fully in August? Would that be under, would that be legal under our statutes? Technically, yes. I, I'm not sure that practically uh, whether that how well that works because she'd have to have all the permits to be able to open. Inspection will have to clear her. But okay. let's say she is able to get all of sort of the legal requirements out of the way before June 30th, open for a week or open even for an, a, a night. As long as she serves alcohol um, on that night, she could shut down again for, for up to six months in order to sort of do more cosmetic changes if that's what she wanted to do. So my question would be, Ms. Valdez, do you understand? Do you understand what that, how that, how this is working? Yes, I do understand. And and that, that is something you think you can handle or not handle, yes. but that works for you? Yes, it does. Okay. Well, then I would move to extend the uh, license till uh, June 30th. I'll second. second. Okay, there's been a motion by Donahue, second by Feldy. Ms. Feldez, do you have any additional questions for us at all while we have you? No, I do not. Okay, sounds good. Well, thank you for attending the meeting today. Any further discussion thank from, you. from uh, committee members? No. no. No, all right then. Seeing none, all those in favor of uh, granting the extension, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed, chair votes aye, that's approved. Thank you. Okay, 3.4, RO number 169-2021, submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30th, 2021, December 31st, 2021, April 14th, 2022, and June 30th, 2022. Um, looks like the recommendation is so, granting. Yeah, we are recommending granting all of the licenses on the RO. Two of the, the, the two changes of premises do have some contingency that they do have to obtain street festival permits, but, but, but we can vote to grant. I'll make a motion to grant. Second. Motion by Barb, second by Betty. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. Next meeting is April 14th. Seeing that we've exhausted the agenda, is there so mo such motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. There's been a motion second to adjourn. All those in favor of adjourning, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.